oxidation reduction reaction we call them as redox reactions also so in this video you will be learning about uh, uh, some oxidation reduction reactions and you will be introduced to oxidation numbers oxidation numbers are also called as oxidation states more detailed explanations and use of oxidation reduction reactions you will see under the topic of electrochemistry or you can check on the web uh, on the link given over there let us start with oxidation number what is the oxidation number basically it is the charge on an ion for group 1 elements the charge on an ion is positive 1 and the oxidation number is positive 1 group 2 it is positive 2 and group 3 it is positive 3 we will leave out group 4 and 5 and go on to group 6 that's negative 2 and group 7 it is negative 1 you are supposed to remember all these charges now let's consider a compound so3 and we need to find out the oxidation number for sulfur so the oxidation number of oxygen in so3 is negative 2 because it belongs to group so how the way we calculate is let the oxidation number for sulfur i represented it as s then plus i have three oxygen therefore three times negative 2 because each oxygen has an oxidation number of negative 2 equal to 0 because the total uh, uh, compound is actually neutral so when you solve this you get the oxidation number of sulfur as positive 6 so this is the way we calculate the oxidation number let's proceed further and find out the oxidation number of uh, the various other elements in some other compounds next one is potassium permanganate i'm calculating the oxidation number for manganese because potassium belonging to group 1 has the oxidation number of positive 1 and oxygen is negative 2 so when i calculate it i get the oxidation number for manganese as positive 7 then uh, potassium dichromate k2cr2o7 we calculate the oxidation number of chromium and that comes as positive 6 then the next compound uh, fe2so4 thrice iron 3 sulfate i uh, you've been asked to calculate the oxidation number for iron fe and uh, i can take sulfate as a whole so4 has a charge of negative 2 and hence uh each ion gets a charge of positive 3 then uh, sulfuric acid the oxidation number of sulfur is positive 6 and nitric acid the oxidation number of nitrogen has been calculated and that comes as positive 5 and ammonia oxidation number of nitrogen is negative 3 so if you notice nitric acid and ammonia the oxidation number of nitrogen Uh, in one it is positive 5 the another one it is negative 3 so nitrogen belonging to group 5 can show an oxidation state varying from positive 5 to negative 3 see like the other compounds of nitrogen like uh, uh, no no2 n2o3 if you find out the oxidation numbers you will see the different oxidation numbers of nitrogen so we will take up some oxidation numbers as special cases because for example in h2o2 the oxidation number of oxygen is negative 1 and not negative 2 and compounds of chlorine and oxygen because oxygen is more electronegative than chlorine chlorine has a positive oxidation state so as shown there in cl2o hclo hclo2 hclo3 you can see that the chlorine is having a positive oxidation state and perchloric acid it has the highest oxidation state of positive 7 and uh, a compound bit of between o and f the oxygen gets a positive oxidation state and fluorine never gets a positive oxidation state being the most electronegative element it always has a negative 1 oxidation state the other um, discrepancies are the hydrides of the group 1 and 2 oxidation number of hydrogen which is usually positive is negative 1 when it combines with uh, metals of group 1 and group 
For example, sodium hydride has an oxidation number for hydrogen as negative 1 and magnesium hydride also has an oxidation number for hydrogen as negative 1. The next thing we are going to learn is called as the redox reaction. What is a redox reaction? Consider the reaction between copper and silver plus. So, in this the copper solid is becoming copper 2 plus equals of copper S is losing the electron and uh, because it is getting a positive charge and hence this is called oxidation. Then you see that silver plus is becoming silver and it is gaining electrons and hence the process is reduction. So how will I remember this? Consider this uh, mnemonics it will help you to remember. Oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons or how we remember is oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electron, reduction is gain of electron. Oil rig will help you to remember it. Another way of remembering is to use the number line. If the oxidation number goes towards the negative side, it is reduction. If the oxidation number goes towards the positive side, that is from 0 to 1 or negative 1 to 1, it is oxidation. Simple. So, remember either oil rig or the way the numbers goes in the number line, you will be able to predict whether it is oxidation or reduction. The next thing you have to learn in this is, the substance which gets oxidized is a reducing agent and the substance which gets reduced is the oxidizing agent. So, in this case, copper is getting oxidized, hence copper is a reducing agent. And silver plus, because you should see what is there on the reactant last side. Silver plus is getting reduced to silver and hence silver plus is the oxidizing agent. Predict which is getting oxidized, reduced and they find out the oxidizing and reducing agent for the reaction given over there. So, for your reference, the number line is also given over there. So, let us just look at Fe2 plus is becoming Fe3 plus and on the number line, you can see that it is going more towards the positive side and hence it is oxidized. And for reduction, MnO4 minus and Mn2 plus will be considered. If you calculate the oxidation state of manganese, you can see that it changes from positive 7 to positive 2. That means it is going more towards the negative side and hence it is reduced. So anything which is oxidized is the reducing agent, hence Fe2 plus is the reducing agent and something which gets reduced is the oxidizing agent and hence permanganate ion MnO4 minus is the oxidizing agent. So one more example, predict which is getting oxidized, reduced and you have to find out again the oxidizing and the reducing agent. The equation given is iron plus oxygen giving you Fe2O3. As always, the ref for the reference, I have given you the number line also. So, Fe is becoming Fe3+. plus. If you look at that, Fe, the oxidation state of iron and iron oxide is Fe3+, plus, and therefore it is getting oxidized. And uh, O2 is becoming O2-, minus, and hence it is getting reduced because the number is going more towards the negative side from 0 to negative 2 and oxygen will be the oxidizing agent and iron will be Fe will be the reducing agent. Be careful when you are choosing the oxidizing and the reducing agent. It will, you have to choose it from the reactant side only. Do not go for the product side. And this reaction when you see that it is uh, I have only one product and two reactants combined to give that we also call it as a combination reaction or I can say combination redox reaction. One more example when I am reacting Fe and Ag2O to give you Ag plus FeO. So, refer to the ref uh, number line and you can see that Fe is becoming Fe2 plus hence it is getting oxidized. The oxidation number going from 0 to positive 2 therefore it is going more towards the positive side and for silver it is going from positive 1 to 0 and hence it is going towards the reduction side and it is reduced and Ag2O is the oxidizing agent 
and Fe is the reducing agent. So now I'm going to uh, do the uh, for the reaction copper oxide and ammonia giving you nitrogen, water and Cu and um, if you consider ammonia is getting converted into nitrogen and copper oxide to copper. So ammonia, and, uh, ammonia is getting oxidized and copper oxide is getting reduced and um, oxidizing agent is copper oxide and reducing agent is ammonia. You can ask a question what happened to the water there. So if you look at that you find that there is nothing which forms the water. If you look at the oxidation states also the oxygen's oxidation state is just similar to what it is supposed to have it. So nothing has actually happened to it. So the actual conversion is between copper oxide to copper and ammonia to nitrogen. That's why we have considered only these two compounds. 